Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm Commissioner Al French and my guest today is Scott Simmons, our newly hired Chief Executive Officer for Spokane County. Scott, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Commissioner. It's a pleasure to be here. So before we get started, Scott, for the benefit of our audience, could you give us a little bit of an overview of kind of yourself and uh, part of your background? Absolutely. So prior to joining the county, I was with the city of Spokane. Mm -hmm. I was there for just about eight years, served a variety of roles under two mayors. Uh, most recently, I was the public works director, which really oversaw all of the um, street transportation, all the utilities, uh, and a variety of other engineering and uh, capital programs. Um, I was also most recently, before I left, I was the acting city administrator for the previous six months. I had served a variety of roles while I was at the city, uh, from business and developer services, so really working on the planning and permitting side of the, of the operations, historical preservation, um, engineering, and just had a really great uh, chance to really learn about our community, all the services that are provided, what, what's important to our, our community. Um, really eye-opening actually coming to work for civic government and seeing more of the kind of what goes on behind the scenes and, and, uh, and how we actually impact our citizens lives on a daily basis. Prior to that I worked for a national uh, energy management company which was headquartered in Spokane. Uh, that was uh, the name of ECOVA. It's changed names multiple times since mm -hmm. then through various acquisitions. Uh, that was really a, a, a good challenging job that uh, really helped understand how Fortune 500 companies, multi-site locations, manage their energy, manage their water uh, bills. Um, it was a, you'd think it would be a very simple process of large companies being able to understand those. When, but when they're dealing with 15,000 utilities across the nation and an inability to aggregate that information that actually helps them make actionable decisions, that's really what ECOVA provided for them. Uh, prior to that, I was with a, another national firm. It was a telecommunications firm, and they had an office here in Spokane, amongst many other ones. So really got a chance to learn a lot about telecom and fiber mm -hmm. and Internet and, and broadband. And, uh, and, and previous to that, I was, uh, came out of college. I was working for a CPA, here, CPA firm here locally uh, in, this, in Spokane. So I've been in Spokane for uh, about tw nearly 20 years, uh, and it's just been a great place to live. I really enjoy it here. Uh, great amenities uh, that, that families can enjoy and, and great work opportunities as well. Well, and it sounds like you've got a very diverse background, which gives you a lot of skill sets to, to um, uh, make you an excellent CEO at the county because we deal with things across the board and stuff. But the one thing that, uh, you know, hiring you from the city uh, uh, reflects is that there's been a lot of cross-pollinization between the city and the county. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they hired our chief budget officer, Tanya Wallace. Uh, uh, we've hired you, but prior to that, we hired uh, uh, Jerry Gimmel, who was with the city and then came over at the county and stuff. So, you know, the, the, that cross-pollinization helps work toward uh, trying to achieve regional goals and stuff because it creates some some uh, commonality between the employees that understands that just because you're on the other side of the river it doesn't mean you're on the other side of the issue. And uh, so it gives us a great opportunity to work together. Absolutely. So what was your motivation to uh, want to take the, on the challenge of a uh, role of CEO for Spokane County? Well, first of all, I was humbled to even be considered for it. The work I did at the city was really helpful in getting that uh, really deeper insight into all the services that municipal government, county governments provide for our community. And a lot of the things that we did at the city uh, are very similar to what we do at the county. We provide um, improved transportation networks. Uh, we provide parks facilities. Uh, we provide um, law enforcement. And so those really helped me kind of look at the county and say, okay, there's, a, there's some really similarities. But then there were some really different challenges mm -hmm. and exciting opportunities where we don't have a fair and expo at the city. We have it at the county. Uh, the county has a uh, medical examiner's office, um, probably not necessarily known uh, by a lot. And then we just have a diversity of other electeds. Um, we have a very robust criminal justice system that touches on all of our, our county. So when I looked at the ability to... Um, utilize some of what I had learned at the city and expand it more into a uh, even a more diverse uh, set of business lines. That really excited me and compelled me to to look really hard at it. And then as I went through the process, a lot of highlights around culture, talented workforce, um, 
were, were shared with me. And boy, I've really seen that as I've been here in, in my two, uh, two short months. And you mentioned the collaboration, Al, mm -hmm. on city county opportunities. And a lot of those things are evidenced every single day. So being able to take a lot of what I had, had learned feet on the ground at the city um, has really helped me um, step into a really challenging um, role here at the, at the uh, county and has been very enjoyable, uh, been welcome uh, with open arms by everyone, and it's just been um, a great opportunity and, again, humbled for the, for the chance. So I'm uh, sure that many in our audience would appreciate an overview of the roles and responsibilities you face as a CEO in an organization like Spokane County. So can you provide us a little bit of perspective uh, about uh, what does the life and the day of a CEO look like in Spokane County? It's a question I get asked by a lot of my friends, a lot of my family, and other colleagues. And the way I would describe it, it's, it's fast-paced, it's diverse, it's challenging. Every day is different. I'm pivoting to so many topics in a, in a given day. Um, every, uh, every day is different. The opportunities to really be involved in our public development authorities where they're really focusing on driving, uh, attracting jobs and um, businesses that want to be here that can provide an employable, good living wage salary for our, our uh, citizens. I spend time on other boards and, and commissions uh, as well uh, on behalf of the, of the board. We have uh, regular leadership meetings with our team and mm -hmm. it, that really allows for some great collaboration, allows for some good interaction, learnings from each other. All of the different department heads bring a different unique skill set. Um, so every day is, is a, a different day. We've got a lot of uh, topics and, and issues that get brought to us regularly from the community, things that are important. And you hear the same things. It's, it's uh, they want public safety, they want to be safe, mm -hmm. and they want to have good roads to drive on, and they want to have great parks to be able to recreate in. Uh, so that's been uh, actually really, really interesting. And as I share with folks out there, it's, it's uh, you just have to be ready to pivot on a regular mm -hmm. basis to a variety of topics, land use, planning, permitting, all of our, our, our sewer, our, our environmental services programs, garbage, um, keeps you on your toes. Yeah, uh, the, the transition for me when I went from the city to the county is things at the county happen at a much quicker pace. And uh, uh, we don't have a whole myriad of committees that you have to go through to make a decision. It's up to the three county commissioners and our senior leadership to make those decisions and stuff. So yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's great to have you on board. So you have some big shoes to fill in replacing our previous CEO, Jerry Gimmel. He agreed to stick around throughout uh, April to help with the transition. Can you share a little bit about uh, what your first month was like? Well, I was very blessed to have Jerry really, really be able to shadow Jerry during that month. That doesn't happen in a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. And there's so much knowledge that Jerry had for it from his 40 years at the, at the county. Um, quite honestly, a year probably wouldn't have even been enough time to absorb it. But but a month was really great to come alongside of him, um, see what had, had uh, helped him be successful in the role, the interactions that he has with the commissioners, the other department heads, the other electeds. Um, he had just a, a grace and a poise amongst him. He was a very uh, big relationship builder and, and, uh, and a collaborator. Um, really helped kind of set the tone and tenor for some really great culture that's happening here at the county. Um, so I was, I was very uh, uh, grac uh, uh, gratified to have that opportunity for him to, to be there and share that knowledge with me. So that, uh, that month that you had uh, to share with Jerry, it must have been like drinking uh, from a fire hose, yeah, an sure awful was. lot to consume in a very short period of time. But was there any advice that Jerry gave you during that period uh, that uh, stood out for you in particular? Yeah, there were there were a couple of things that he really uh, emphasized with me, and it's it was really making sure that the the um, ability to build relationships, be that emissary with the other uh, elected leaders throughout our organization, uh, the department heads, help to really understand kind of what their day looks like, what their critical issues are, help guide them through um, how we get to outcomes that are helpful for our community. Um, and it really goes along the lines of, of being a collaborator. So really making sure that you're, you're mindful of, of uh, all of the, the um, 
decision making, the operational inputs, the outcomes that we're trying to look at. And he emphasized a lot on listen and learn mm -hmm. and be a sponge for information. Um, the, more, the more you know, the more you can learn. And, and the, the great thing about being in an organization like this is you're not the expert in any single area. You've got wonderful teammates around you who know their business very well. Be fluent enough in that so you can help them be successful. And really our success as a, as a county is the success of our employees and our, our frontline folks who are out there every single day providing services to our community and being mindful of what, what's important to them. That was one of the things that I was grateful at the city is that uh, department heads and, and frontline people knew an awful lot that they were willing to share and they were willing to help you make good decisions. And, um, and I find the same kind of support at the county. And um, that's been really gratifying to be able to know that you've got uh, folks that are standing behind you, standing next to you, that are uh, invested into your success because it means better community for everybody and stuff. So from your point of view, what has, been, uh, what has it been like to provide community services during a new era of COVID-19 and all the protocols that come with that? In some ways, it's been kind of business as usual. We had continued to, to plow our roads mm -hmm. from snow. We continued to provide public safety for our community. We continued to do road maintenance. And a lot of those frontline things that impact people's daily lives, we did it. Now, we did it with different safety precautions, different mm -hmm. safety protocol that was you know, challenging at times, but, but really um, kind of stepped into it and leaned into it. What was the biggest difference is what the what gets termed as our non-essential. Everyone's essential. I don't really like that term too much, but non-essential is folks that, that weren't necessarily at the front line of, of um, mm -hmm. uh, providing that visible service in front of the community today. Uh, folks that are our, our back office, our engineering teams, our techs, our administration folks. Um, how did we step into enabling them to work remotely? Because we had to to change our operations. We had to change the way we were engaging with our community. And a lot of our folks on that day, we sent them home. And I, I, I wanna say it's around 500 people who worked remotely. And so being able to pivot quickly and support them in a way that through technology, they were able to do their work just as if they were in the office. And not only that, but from a community perspective, how did we allow our customers to have a seamless interaction with our employees? So. That's probably been the, the biggest change uh, that we've had to experience, but from that we've learned a lot. We learned that uh, our employees can be successful and productive um, working remotely, working virtually. We've learned that there are good tools and technology that can help support that. We've learned that our, our citizens can still interact um, virtually, if not in person. Um, it doesn't always take the place of an in-person dialogue just like this, but it really has helped us be um, effective and efficient in there. Not without its hiccups, it had challenges. None of, none of us were prepared to completely pivot that many people to, to work from home all at once, but our team really did a great job and that had a, a lot of involvement from a lot of different factors of the, of the organization. Yeah, the COVID protocols uh, really <clears throat> didn't give us an option about how we changed the way we do business, it said you will work remotely. You will um, uh, change the, the manner in which you deliver those services and really forced us to do things we might not have uh, been willing to explore. Mm -hmm. But now that we've experienced it, we're going, yeah, that wasn't all that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe we need to incorporate this more into some of our culture and stuff. So it's it's been an interesting learning process. So as we start to come out of the pandemic, where does the county sit now with our current restrictions regarding COVID protocols? Sure. So recently, I, the community knows the CDC changes guidelines with regards to um, masking and, and vaccinations, and the Board of County Commissioners adopted that as well. So we've been adopting that within the, uh, the county and have been flexing. We meet probably every other week as a kind of a COVID reopening team. And that has all of our leadership, all of our other electeds across the organization. So we're dialoguing and informing because these are rapidly evolving, rapidly mm -hmm. changing. Uh, one, day, one day it's this direction, the next day it's a different one. So it causes us to be on our, our toes quite a bit. But through that, we've learned a lot and 
we've incorporated a lot of the, um, uh, the latest protocols and, and whatnot. We're excited that possibly by June 30th, we're going to be fully reopened. Um, and that will uh, mean a lot of different things for us. We are, you, you mentioned earlier around, it's changed the way we're doing business and it's enabled our employees to work remotely, um, yet still uh, provide that services, services to our, our citizens. So we're looking at different things like collaboration centers. I don't, kn I don't know that we'll ever go back to business as usual. No. It's proven technology and, and capabilities of our employees have proven that we can do this with different models. So our challenge is how do we continue to recruit and retain that workforce that wants to have mm -hmm. some more flexibility. Our collaboration centers are one of those areas that we're using other parts of the uh, facilities that mm -hmm. Spokane County owns and operates and opening them up to more kind of uh, scheduling ad hoc as a team who's working primarily remotely wants to come in together and do a either a team building event or just to get together face to face with each other, have a comfortable place to, to, to um, be. But it's allowed us then to look at repurposing other space that's likely not going to be a permanent uh, work uh, cubicle for an, an employee. So that's been a good challenge for us to go through. We're, we're trying to stand one up for a pilot later this year, and hopefully on the heels of that, we'll find another one. And, and really, we're looking diverse across the, the, uh, uh, the county. So it's not all going to be necessarily on the county campus. We're looking out east. We're looking up north. We're looking down south so that it's really more conducive to where our employees are at. Well, and for <clears throat> many of the employees that have been working remotely, uh, coming back uh, to the county, and maybe they only come into the office once or twice a week, and uh, they work remotely uh, three or four days out of the week, well, that's a significant impact on their lives. I mean, now they don't have to deal with child, support, uh, child care mm -hmm. uh, at the same level they did before, transportation issues, and a number of other issues. So the work experience hopefully will be enhanced by changing the conditions in which uh, and the environment within which they have to work. So uh, change is not always necessarily a bad thing. I agree. You just have to embrace it. So how's your experience been so far working with the other executives and department heads of the county and, and specifically maybe the county commissioners themselves? Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned earlier that um, it was really a welcoming embrace by, by everyone, and I've seen that with each of the department heads and electeds I've mm -hmm. met with. Um, just a willingness to, to work together and, and cross-collaborate. It really makes us stronger as a county. Mm -hmm. Our citizens, uh, they don't necessarily look and say, well, it's, it's um, uh, the building department or the, the uh, public works department. It's the county. So we want to be as clear and, and <coughs> transparent and um, open for a similar experience for what our, our county residents expect. So that's been ver very evident uh, amongst all the mm -hmm. other electeds and, and department heads, and they really have um, shown that, that culture that's it's here and embedded. It's we, we want to work together. We want to do things better for the better outcomes of our, of our community. Um, working with the county commissioners, my, my bosses, one of my, one of my bosses right here, it's <coughs> really been, uh, you've all welcomed me in very well. Um, there's a steep learning curve with a lot of things that's happening regularly. Um, business didn't stop just because you had a new new CEO, and uh, just the ability to to communicate and collaborate with all three of you on topics and issues that we're dealing with um, readily in the in the uh, community and the county has been very very uh, helpful. Um, so all in all, it's been a really really good experience and and um, again a great onboarding for me. Well, and being able to work with you uh, representing the city uh, for as long as we were able to, there was some familiarity. Uh, so that when the board made the decision about uh, hiring you, it was unanimous. There was no dissension. We said that's the man that's going to help the county uh, transition and stuff. So uh, you enjoy our full support, and we're glad to have you on board. Thank you. So could you give our audience a glimpse into some of the big projects you're working on uh, uh, currently for the county? Yeah, a lot of, lot of really cool stuff, a lot of fun things that are happening. We've got uh, the opening of Bidwell Park, which has been a major investment that the county has made on behalf of its community. That's gonna be happening the end of June. Um, and with that, our aquatics facilities are actually going to be opening up next uh, week as well, in a week. So that's great to be able to have the community be able to experience that again. And we've been closed down, shut down for a long time, and it was a big missing piece, a really good outlet for our families and their, and their kids to be able to enjoy. Um, Fancher Road. 
another project that's that's going to be kicking mm -hmm. off later this year is part of the entirety of connecting that North Sullivan area over to Bigelow Gulch. So there's been a lot of improvements out in that area right now with redesigning the, um, the Folk, Folker Interchange onto Bigelow Gulch. This will then continue down connecting the work that was done recently down onto, onto Wellesley. So that's a really important transportation mm -hmm. connection for our community, for freight, for, for businesses. We've got a new mental health crisis stabilization facility that's going to yeah. set to be coming online later this fall, uh, which is a very innovative uh, and needed element in our community and one that you've been a big champion of. Um, speaking of change, it's causing us to pivot and think differently about how, how we uh, provide different sort of resources for that population. And I think the community is gonna really see some benefit of that. Um, we've got uh, uh, various other, um, like I mentioned, the collaboration centers that are, that are up and coming, um, the small arms range which is one mm -hmm. that the sheriff has been leading uh, very closely. That's going to be located out in the West Plains. And that's a great collaboration with the Air Force, with Fairchild, okay. having a joint facility out there. Um, I believe we're going to have a ribbon cut or a groundbreaking later this uh, summer, coming up mm -hmm. pretty soon here. So that's pretty exciting for the uh, community. Uh, talking about how are we doing things uh, on, a, on a more improved basis for our community, online permitting. Mm -hmm. We've learned through the, the, uh, the pandemic that we've got to think differently about how we engage and how do we make it easier for our, our customers to do business with us. So rather than having to come down on the, community, on the county campus and fight with parking and all that sort of um, difficulties, we've been, our team has been really working closely on building out an online permitting portal that, that creates a much more ease of our citizens to be able to pull easy permits off and have them in their hands on a more timely basis. Um, we've got other parks projects that are, that are coming up that, we're, that uh, the parks team is looking at from Liberty Lake to um, Bear Lake improvements um, and a variety of other uh, golf course uh, updates uh, at some of the, um, uh, the golf course uh, uh, shelters and, and other things out there. So a lot, of, a lot of really cool things. And Fair and Expo, another one mm -hmm. that we did not get to have last year because of COVID. And so our Fair and Expo team has been working really hard around helping uh, be prepared to have a Spokane County Fair this year. We don't know yet what it's going to look like. A lot of it will learn from the reopening, but the ability to have that really great amenity that this community has relied on for so many years is going to be fantastic. Well, and it's, it's not only the projects that we do internally for the county, but also the projects in the community that we facilitate for other organizations. Uh, for instance, uh, the county is the uh, fiscal agent, if you will, for the public facilities district. And uh, we agreed uh, a couple of years ago to uh, finance uh, the uh, construction of the pavilion. And uh, that's now in the final stages. And not only is that a, a new facility that will be enjoyed by people throughout uh, uh, Spokane County, but throughout the, the Northwest and the country, because mm -hmm. uh, some of the features it has. But then you look at what the city did with its park renovation and, and uh, the new uh, kids park just located right outside the pavilion and a lot of the other things that are uh, new attractions at the uh, Riverfront Park. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things. And you know, right now, Spokane County is enjoying one of its most uh, uh, aggressive growth periods uh, in, uh, for as long as I can remember, and I've been here for almost 40 years. And so it's, it's fun to be part of that. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to see a lot of this new development happening. And uh, that's one of the roles that you get to play is uh, you also represent the county on the public development authorities and uh, the, the, the resources that that entity brings and stuff. So Absolutely. that's a little bit of a different uh, environment for you as well. Yep, it is. So in our last few minutes, are there any other messages you'd like to share with our audience? One of the um, really great attributes of the county that I saw when I came in is, is the great financial position that, that the county is in. And that's in large part due to the actions that the Board of County Commissioners took. Um, the pandemic, we didn't know how that was going to impact us. And there was a lot of uncertainty regarding sales taxes and other things that we use mm -hmm. to be able to invest in the services that our community has. And the, the Board of County Commissioners have done a really great job of positioning the, the county and, and our residents on really solid footing. So that's been very um, uh, warming to me to see that. Um, mm -hmm. doesn't, come out with, doesn't come without challenging 
decisions yeah. that are made, but it's incumbent upon uh, you all and, and, and me helping to support to make sure that we're well positioned so that we don't find ourselves into a, a challenging spot. And it's enabled us to do mm -hmm. things, uh, the projects that, that you've highlighted and mm -hmm. helping to support the PFD through their bonding and, and helping yeah. them um, stay competitive and other regional partnerships that we're involved in. So I'm excited to continue helping to support that, being very mindful of the budget discipline that we have and still be able to invest very smartly in our, in our community and our, mm -hmm. co our county. Scott, I've enjoyed our discussion, and I think our viewers have too, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. I'd like to thank my guest, Scott Simmons, for joining us today, and of course, for his years of service to the people of Spokane County. As a reminder, a video of today's spotlight can be accessed on our Spokane County homepage and on our Spokane County YouTube channel. I'd also like to remind our audience that Spokane County has a redesigned mobile app. Spokane County on the go. The app can be downloaded for all Apple and Android devices. To download the app, visit your app store and simply search Spokane County. No other registration is or login is required. Download the app today and connect with Spokane County. I'm County Commissioner Al French. Thank you for joining us today on Spokane County Spotlight. <music>